Hello, my friends. Here I'm back with another contribution from our Scotland whiskey tour. And we are still on Isla. We can't leave this island so quickly because there here are so many nice places to see and so many good whiskies to taste. And I would like to visit with you one of the famous distilleries here on this island. And here we are at Artbeck, one of the really smoky Isla brands. Artbeck had many ups and downs in its history since it was founded in 1815 by John McDougall. After two shutdowns, it was bought by Glen Morangi in 1997, and since that time, the market position is continuously developing. And now, let's have a common look into the production of whiskey with the example of Artbeck. Artbeck uses one of the most phenolic molds in Scotland with heavy, smoky flavors. The malt is produced according to the special requirements of Artbeck at the maltings in Port Allen and is peated to a level of 50 ppm. At the distillery it is crushed into a specially fine grist by the traditional Bobby Malt Mill from the year 1921. Artbeck is very proud of their legendary mill, which is providing the ideal starting material for the brewing process. Yes. What you heard is correct. The whiskey production begins with a typical beer brewing process. Of course, for beer brewing wouldn't be used any peated mold. But also at the whiskey production, first the grist is mixed several times at different temperatures up to 63.5 degrees C in the mash tun with water from Loch Ugedal. This converts starch into sugar. The spent grains are rinsed out with water and later fed to the cattle. Then the yeast is added to the liquid malt, which is now called the wort. It is cooled down to 18 degrees. In special Oregon pine wooden wash bags starts now the fermentation. Artbeck chooses this pine wood because it adds a special carbolic aroma to the liquid, which is now called the wash. In this process, the bacteria of the yeast turn the malt sugar into alcohol. The result is a light beer with about 8.5% of alcohol. This is filled now into the wash still for the first distillation. During this process, the wash is boiled. And uh, because alcohol is lighter than water, it rises up first and passes through the line arm into the condenser. And in the condenser, it's cooled down and then flows into the low wine receiver. Up to there, it has about 24% of alcohol. In the next step, the wine goes into the spirit still, where it is distilled again, this time up to 76% of alcohol. Now starts the critical process, where the knowledge and the experience of the master distiller are required. At the spirit receiver, the distiller can decide which part of the spirit he is using for the whiskey. When the liquid starts flowing, the first part is still spoiled with impurities. So about the first 10 minutes, the so-called foreshot will be separated. After that, the usable spirit is collected for about four and a half hours. When the alcohol content goes down to 62.5%, there are again impurities expected. So this part is also separated. The distillation process adds the first flavors to the spirit. The lighter alcohol, which is rising first, contains the sweet and fruity aromas. And later rise the more heavy and phenolic ones. Artpec uses an additional purifier at the outlet of the still, where a part of the heavy phenols are filtered and separated. All the separated parts will later be distilled again with the next batch. And finally, the salty air of the near seaside adds also some salty iodine flavors. So, by the time to switch between the whiskey which is filled into the casks and the separated part, and also by the special filtering of phenols, the master distiller can decide about the aroma of the whiskey. And he can keep perfect balance between sweetness and smokiness. 
Finally, the spirit is filled into special casks which are carefully picked by the head of distilling and whiskey creation. And they will add during maturation many more flavors to the whiskey. At Artbeck, most of them are American ex bourbon casks. But for different types of Artbeck whiskey, they use also casks from Speyside Cooperage, from Craig Gallagher, or special French oak casks. Okay, now we know how it is produced. So let's have a look at some of the nice Artbeck whiskies. Here is their standard program and also a special suggestion. All of them heavily peated molds. I think everybody knows their flagship Artback 10, which is matured in ex bourbon and American oak casks. It's still comparable young, and the heavy phenol and medical peat notes are very aggressive and dominant. So, this is really for hardcore peat fans. The NOA is a more balanced one. Not to be misunderstood, all the Artback whiskies are very smoky molds. But additionally to the typical Artbeck ex bourbon casks, for the NOA, virgin charred oak casks contribute some spiciness and Pedro Jimenez sherry casks some velvet sweetness of chocolate and anise seed. The Ugedal comes with a combination of strong peat and full sweet raisin flavors from sherry casks. It is filled with 54.2%, so full flavored and a very strong whiskey. The Cory Reckon takes its name from the famous whirlpool in the north of Isla. It comes with the swirling aromas of deep, peaty, peppery taste and with 57.1% alcohol, so like the whirlpool, nothing for the faint-hearted. And finally, I have a suggestion of a special whiskey of Artbeck, which is showing that they are willing to try even new combination of casks. The Dark Golden Artback Drum is a limited edition, which is matured in ex bourbon and later in American rum casks. To the well-known peat notes, it adds flavors of smoked apples, pineapple and ripe bananas. Spicy hints of cloves, licorices and ginger follow to a finish with sweet coffee liquor and smoky vanilla. So, some of the old Artback friends may say that uh, this is not a real Artback whiskey. <laughs> but trying it a little bit open-minded, I must say that I really love this combination of heavy peat and uh, exotic aromas. I must really say, I love this one. Okay, so I'm looking forward to see you soon from another nice place in Scotland.